Alright, just finished up a very unpleasant game of Rail Baron, and you can guess I'm going to not give it a very good review. Uh, look, uh, when you first pick up the game, when you first look at it, it looks like there's some interesting decision making. You've got all these different railroad. Uh, they don't really use up more than one little baggie for all my pieces for this, because it's just not going to get used much. Um, you have all these different railways. It looks like maybe they have different strengths and weaknesses, and they do. And a little bit of analysis on here, looking at this chart, what falls, what doesn't, tells you pretty much what you need to know. More than that, maybe groupthink tells you what you need to know. Um, although, as I pointed out in, in the wrap, it may be that even that isn't enough. What it comes down to is straight numbers. And once you've processed this little bit of information that takes maybe less than one play, like looking at the charts and just thinking about it, uh, but it also may take a few plays if you don't bother doing the, the number, number crunching there. Uh, but once you do, it's pretty damned obvious that the entire game will always follow a certain pattern. And then it becomes, okay, if I have to follow this pattern, at least at the beginning, if I need a northeastern line and then I need a southwestern line, from there it gets a little trickier, but it's usually a northwestern line then. Uh, maybe a southeastern, although those come up very rarely. But sometimes there's an opportunity line that jumps up, and you want to take that for the because you get a few bucks off of it or whatever. But beyond these tiny little shifts and things, almost Everyone is going to play based on one, one uh, clear strategy. And because of that, and because there is so much luck in the game, it really does just come down to a dice fest. Add to that. Because a dice fest, okay, that's terrible, but, you know, it can be kind of relaxing to play a game where you're rolling. Add to that, there's this annoying damn chart that you have to read. It's really hard on anyone with kind of troubled eyes. Uh, I had trouble with this thing back when, you know, you have to trace down and across, and it's tiny, tiny things. Uh, this was a pain in the butt when I was 25 and playing this game. It's doubly so now. Um, add to that, then, it's long. It takes a long time. One of uh, one of the people we first were playing with it suggested, hey, let's do like Monopoly and deal out, and not that I would ever play Monopoly this way, and deal out all the properties. <laughs> the only fun thing in this game is the buying of the railways. <laughs> Beyond that, you're just playing out this humongous, and I was at maybe 50,000. It was going to take another two hours of playing at least. Uh, on the way I play, but straight playing uh, to get through the game. It feels like this incredibly long game. Everything's largely decided except for a throw of the dice. So there were two players who had a chance in the game, blue and black, in the game I played. We could just throw a die and say whichever one of them made it through one. Uh, uh, very seldomly is there such a runaway player that everybody can conceive. And, yeah, it, it really tells you something because I have not walked away from a game yet in the videos. And I very, very seldomly walk away from the game when I solo it, even without the videos. So I'm sort of crossing up the line here uh, <laughs> in terms of, yeah, it had to be really bad to push me over that edge. Um... That all said, I don't rate it that terribly. Because in a sense, it is not as, it's not that much worse to me than some games that do require thought that I respect more, but that are just more annoying. So, for example, Crayon Rails gets, I think, about the same rating as this. Uh, Crayon Rails has this interesting situation going every time you get in you know you get a chance to draw new cards or whatever you have to figure out new routes but that is such a headache to me and many of the same criticisms still are able to be loved to that the fun of that game comes all early on when you're laying 
down your initial track. The fun in this game is, hey, what, what companies am I going to get? Uh, of course, that boils away completely, especially in a, a solo game. It does not solo at all well, and neither does Crayon Rails, and I'm kind of questioning whether or not I'm going to ever bring those to the table, just because they're so bad solo. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, is there anyone I can recommend this to? Not really. I mean, there are, I'm sure, there are popular train games out there, things like Ticket to Ride, that I haven't tried, but they've got to be better than this uh, on the lighter side of things. Uh, there are games like uh, your, your Age of Steam and Chicago Express that are smaller, lighter, involve a lot of thinking. They're not going to have the same luck element. Damn Frost has a luck element. It doesn't drag out as long. Yes, it can get uh, unbalanced very quickly. What about a pure luck fest game? Well, uh, let's say you like Monopoly, but don't want the one thing that's worthwhile in Monopoly, which is cutting deals and kind of, uh, you know, this risk management with the, the building situation. You do have a little bit of the risk management here in terms of buying property stuff. So, yeah, hey, I got $4,000 left, can I afford it? And it's harsher if you fail here. But, uh, but if you don't like the trading aspect of Monopoly, which to me is, that's sort of the one key point to Monopoly. It's the one thing that Monopoly brings to the table that's of any interest, uh, is the ability, and it, it only happens once in a game, for player maybe twice, you know, to cut a really important deal, uh, to put yourself in or out of the game. If you don't like the trading aspect, but want a long, tedious dice fest, <laughs> well, all right, then this is your game. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I don't know who this appeals to, and it's really kind of funny because it commands, or people at least ask, significantly high prices for it, as though it's some sort of real game. I don't know. It has its fans. It gets played, at, at least it used to get played at WBC every every year. Uh, again, I don't know why. I don't know, you know, what it's meant to appeal to. It does not appeal to people who are really interested in strategy. I don't think it has the lightness, the ability to catch up, all this other stuff that makes kind of a really luck-based game palatable to a lot of people. It just leaves you with this, okay, so it's a game where maybe two or three people more or less grab a commanding lead halfway through and then you get to play for a couple hours more, or whatever. I don't know, it feels like forever, I don't know if it is. Uh, I think it's about a four-hour game, so yeah, I mean, I think there's about two hours of, of kind of neat as things are developing, and then an hour, maybe two hours, of unpleasantness, where you're just rolling dice and moving along your stuff. And then there's these headache-inducing rules like, ah, oh, yeah, if you move on the wrong dot, you're screwed. <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand what the game is meant to appeal to. Anyway, maybe some of the people who like it all chime in on this, because I have a long history with this sucker, and it just, it appealed to very few people in our group. One guy liked it, and I'm not sure why, <laughs> because it did not fit in with most of the other games that he liked. Uh, I think it was just that he was as aware as the rest of us about how to win it, and a little bit more willing to save to do so. Maybe just a tad more willing to put a little bit of effort into the game. And so, I don't know, he tended to win more often. Maybe that pleased him somehow. Most of us uh, were pretty disappointed with the game. You know, it would sound kind of exciting at times, and it sort of did here when I started playing it. I, it it's one of those games that I have sort of these... Memories of fond memories that probably aren't real, and then when I, whenever I play it, I'm not happy. <laughs> uh, 
So I don't know. Anyway.